Hi everyone, I hope you've had a really great week. It's great to be back in the UK. Um, warm welcome to everyone and enjoy this week's service. Hello and welcome to our worship time together for this week. We're going to begin today with a song that we used some weeks ago at the beginning of our time of doing these services. You, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. You, O Lord, our fortress so secure. It's a reminder that God is our rock, that he's the one that we trust in when times are difficult, that we don't need to be afraid when we put our trust in God. And we were singing that at the beginning of this time. And as time goes on, we come back to that same theme because it's still true that God is our rock and our fortress. Even as things around us change, we need to keep trusting in the Lord our God who is faithful. So our first couple of songs are going to be thinking about that God, our rock, who is faithful to us.
seems, seems to hide his face. face. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. Today I'm going to read from Isaiah chapter 30 and starting at verse 15. And this week I'm reading from the Amplified Bible, which uh, expands some of the words to show the, the depth of meaning that's in the, some of the words in this passage. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning to me, and resting in me, you shall be saved. In quietness and in trusting confidence shall be your strength. But you would not. And you said, no, we will speed on our own course on horses. Therefore you will speed in flight from your enemies. You said, we will ride upon swift steeds, doing things our own way. Therefore will they who pursue you be swift, so swift that one thousand of you will flee at the threat of one of them. At the threat of five you will flee till you are left like a beacon or a flagpole on the top of a mountain, and like a signal on a hill. And therefore the Lord earnestly waits, expecting, looking, and longing to be gracious to you. And therefore he lifts himself up, that he may have mercy on you and show loving kindness to you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied are though all those who earnestly wait for him, who expect and look and long for him, for his victory, his favour, his love, his peace, his joy and his matchless, unbroken companionship. O people who dwell in Zion at Jerusalem, you will weep no more. He will surely be gracious to you at the sound of your cry, 
when he hears it, he will answer you. And though the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teacher will not hide himself any more, but your eyes will constantly behold your teacher. And your ears will hear a word behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it, when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. Then you will defile your carved images overlaid with silver and your molten images plated with gold. You will cast them away as a filthy blood-stained cloth and you will say to them, Be gone. So we've been hearing in that reading about God waiting for his people to come to him, earnestly longing for the time when his people would seek him. And we're going to sing our next song based on that theme that I will set my face to seek the Lord, give my full attention to my God. I will listen for his voice. Let's use this as a prayer to draw near to God, to hear from him.
So in Isaiah 30, we have a picture of God desperately pleading with his people to come to him, to return to him, saying that only in returning to him and in resting in him will they be saved, will they be kept safe. And that in quietness and confidence is your strength. But Israel was restless at heart. Israel wanted to go their own way. They were pursuing alliances with other nations like Egypt to give them military strength. They were relying on war horses that were considered some of the best military equipment available in the known world at the time. And they were putting their trust in these things rather than in the Lord their God. And God looked on, ignored, as they sought these other things instead of him. And he was bitterly upset about what Israel was missing out on. And we get a sense of that in the following verses, how the Lord waits so that he can show you his love and compassion. Because what other things are incapable of offering us is the unconditional love and compassion and father heart that God has to offer us. And so often we go looking in other places for those kind of reassurances, but we don't find them because, as the Lord says, only in returning to him and in taking confidence and resting in him will we be saved. And even though he makes that clear to Israel, they haven't listened and it grieves him because he knows they're going to suffer because of it. And he goes on to say that though the Lord gives you the adversity for food and suffering for drink, I don't think God wanted to do that to Israel. But because they weren't paying him any attention, he had no alternative. And we're in a time when lockdown restrictions in our nation are beginning to be eased, People are beginning to be able to go back to shops. They're beginning to have some return to what we used to call normal. And uh, people are asking themselves, when can we, when can things get back to normal? But I think at this time, we need to pay heed to what God is saying, because God is wanting his voice to be heard more clearly than ever. He's speaking in the midst of our situation and saying, even if things are easing up and the world is trying to get back to how it was, I want you, my people, to come close to me and to be listening for my voice. Because God promises that he's gonna be gracious when they ask for help. They'll weep no more. They'll respond to your cries for help. And he says, you will see your teacher. You'll hear a voice saying, this is the way to go. Whether you're going to the right or to the left, you'll hear that voice of God. And most remarkably of all, at the end of this passage, God is telling them that then they will get rid of the gold and silver idols they've been carrying. All this time, Israel the nation that was called by God to be his very own people to display what he was like to the world have been carrying these gold and silver images around putting their trust in them. How insulting to the God who made heaven and earth and the sea and everything in them to be spurned for these things. Yet how often our hearts are seduced into something other than the Lord God of heaven and earth to build our hopes on, to build our trust on. But God is saying, when you realize how sweet is companionship with me, you'll throw those things away. They won't matter to you anymore. They'll be as um, offensive to you as a bloodstained cloth. You'll just throw them out. Because when we realize what we're being offered in that companionship, I love the way the Amplified Bible puts it. 
when we expect and look and long for him, for his victory, his favor, his love, his peace, his joy, and his matchless, unbroken companionship. And there's a Welsh hymn that puts it very well. One sweet hour of being near you, gazing on your matchless face, far surpasses by the thousand all the pleasures I could taste. They are nothing. They are nothing to the fellowship of God. So, as we consider what God is saying to us at this time, let's heed his voice and respond by coming near, by not being willing to let anything jeopardize that close relationship with him as his people. Because that's where our strength is going to be found. Amen. We've been hearing about God's call for us, his people, to draw near to him and to seek him and listen to him. So we want to have a time where we can respond to that call, to come bringing our hearts and our lives before him. We're going to begin with some music and a time to pray. And then we'll be singing uh, an old him often associated with coming to the Lord for the first time and giving our lives to him just as I am without one plea but that thy blood was shed for me but we can just as well sing it to bring our lives to him again knowing that just as we are whatever the state of our hearts whether we feel near to him already or far away wherever we are we can come because God is looking to be gracious and compassionate to us when we turn towards him. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you that your word brings us encouragement. You are looking to be gracious to us, your people. Your heart is longing for us to come. Your heart's desire is to bless your people. We thank you, Lord, that you are already reaching out to us. And Lord, we want to respond. Lord, we want to say we hear your voice and here we are, your people, coming to you. Lord, we want to recognise that you alone are our source of help and strength. You alone are the one who rescues us. You alone that has, you alone have the answer to what we need in this world. You alone are God. Lord, please help us to listen to your voice. And Lord, please help us to lay aside anything that has become an idol anything that is in the way of our relationship with you. Please show us, Lord, anything that we're holding on to that you want us to put down, however good it seems to us, so that you have first place in our lives. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.
This morning, declaring our dedication to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Christ is my reward and all of my devotion.
so, we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while, you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. We also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power, so you will have all the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father, he has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that you'll join us again in another week more information about who we are and what we believe, feel free to check out our new website, www.emmanuelchurchcardino.org.uk.